In today's video, we will be taking a look at this 18 meter steel hulled long range trawler yacht. This displacement explorer comes with some serious credentials, so make sure that you stay tuned as you won't want to miss this. This impressive trawler yacht was built in 1999 by Cape Horn Yachts. She has a length overall of 18.29 meters, a beam of 5.54 meters, and a draft of 1.83 meters. She is powered by a single 380 horsepower Volvo TAMD 122A that has 2,450 hours of running time on the clock. The primary propulsion drive system is a single full azimuth variable speed hydraulic drive. Also note the skeg, a vital component for long range autonomous cruising. Stay tuned because we will be taking a look at her engine room later on in the video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel as nearly 85% of the people who watch this video will forget to. We know that long distance autonomous cruising with just one engine can be nerve wracking. But thankfully, this Explorer Yacht has a 57 horsepower Volvo diesel engine installed as a secondary come home propulsion system. Talking of long distance cruising, if you are happy to motor along at her cruising speed of 8 knots, then this trawler yacht has a range of 5,000 nautical miles, which would be enough for me to cruise from London over to New York and then down to the Bahamas, which is a distance of around 4,311 nautical miles. Tango 2, as she is affectionately called, has a top speed of 9.5 knots, but you probably won't have to call on this speed to outrun any storms, because one of the great things about this boat is that you can just batten down the hatches and plow straight through them. Before we look at her interior, wheelhouse and engine room, I just want to mention a few of the features of her deck. You will notice how the foredeck has been designed so that any wash from breaking waves will quickly flow over the side. Note also the grab rails which are located atop the Portuguese bridge and on the wheelhouse. This trawler yacht has been built like a wave breaking battering ram. As well as having a steel hull, this boat is afforded a steel superstructure. This is good for general maintenance, but it also means that if you wanted to, you could probably act as a chase boat for the next season of Deadliest Catch because she is built for harsh conditions. In fact, Tango 2 is built to ice class specifications precisely for high latitude voyaging. The upper boat deck is accessed from the after deck by a built in stairway to port. Suitable for open air lounging, the ample deck area is fitted with a tender davit, canister life raft and tenor masts, and a well designed stainless steel and cable handrail system. Next we come to the cockpit. The watertight door that leads into the salon means that if the transom is breached by big waves in following seas, then the watertight integrity of the superstructure will not be compromised, as long of course as you keep the door shut. I also like how the saloon door can be split in two, a great way to enjoy the view when making progress through those following seas. Now we have had a look at the exterior of this little ship, let us head inside and check out her interior. The master stateroom has two watertight doors, one aft for entry into the utility and engine room and one foreign. A walk around king size bed is on the centre line and the generous stowage includes four sets of double hanging lockers, two full sized built in dressers and two nightstands with three drawers each. This spacious stateroom is more extensive than seems possible to fit on a yacht of this size. Attached to this cabin is a full size ensuite head with shower and jacuzzi tub. The forward guest stateroom is fitted with a double size walk around berth, numerous full size hanging lockers, ample stowage, drawers and bookshelf. The guest cabin has two twin size Pullman berths, hanging lockers and stowage drawers. This cabin serves as a very comfortable guest or crew cabin. Its versatility also allows for use as an exercise room or for additional office space. 
The office itself is located right next to the master cabin. This is a fully equipped office for attending to business from distant waters. It has a built-in desk and also contains the tank level monitoring system for the five fuel tanks and the fresh water and black water tanks. The main saloon is a spacious and inviting living space that is comfortable and abundant with natural light. The dining table is custom built with sliding mechanisms that allow the table to glide inward and outward as well as up and down. Across from the dining settee is an enclosed entertainment centre with Sony audio and video equipment and a Bose surround system. The headliner and flooring was new in 2021. The galley is separated from the main saloon area by a breakfast bar fitted with three fixed bar stools. The galley features Korean countertops with Italian tile backsplashes. Plentiful storage space is available in well-finished drawers, cabinets, pantry lockers and under the dinette seats. Food refrigeration and freezer space are provided by two Sub-Zero appliances, a two-drawer freezer positioned at the starboard entry to the galley and a refrigerator-freezer combination placed in the galley. Positioned a few steps up and forward of the main deck, saloon and galley area, the raised pilot house can be accessed from the interior or from port and starboard sliding doors to the Portuguese bridge. The pilot house is roomy and has excellent visibility. It is well equipped for transoceanic voyages. Comfortable accommodation for the helmsman and guests include a long settee with a raised pilot berth above and a commercial grade helm chair with armrests. The centre helm position gives a commanding view with all of the vessel's essential communication and navigation equipment within easy reach. For me, this feels like the sort of pilot's house you would have with a commercial ship, which is a big part of this trolley yacht's no-nonsense appeal. The five forward-facing windows are made of half-inch thick tempered glass fitted with internal electric heating elements. The three front-facing windows are mounted at a downward angle that deflects glare, allows maximum visibility and minimises the potential of impact from a rogue wave. The primary propulsion drive system is a single full azimuth variable speed hydraulic drive manufactured by Thrustmaster Incorporated of Houston, Texas. This drive unit is predominantly used in commercial tugs and power barges where maximum manoeuvrability is required. The Thrustmaster system was given a full service in 2021. The main engine is a commercial Marine Series Volvo TAMD 122A diesel engine, rated at 380 horsepower, continuous at 1800 RPM. When making this video, she is currently listed for sale with all ocean yachts for $795,000. She is located in Washington. This boat is for the long range cruiser who wants to move from continent to continent in an effortless and no fuss manner. Her sea keeping credentials are first class and this is one of the few boats that I would take out in more or less any weather conditions. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Guys, thanks for watching and a special thanks to the subscriber who gave me a heads up about this particular boat. If there's a boat out there that you would like me to feature on my YouTube channel, then please feel free to send me a direct message via my Instagram page or via email. If you enjoyed this video, please consider becoming a supporter of my channel by becoming a member or by sending me a super thanks. I've got some exciting things coming up over the next four weeks, so please make sure that you subscribe to my channel so as not to miss out. Don't forget to sign up for my free newsletter so you never miss any of my videos. And please don't forget to check out my other playlists and to give this video a like. So until next time, fair winds and following seas.